Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at Kodak's Ektachrome slide film. Kodak Ektachrome E100. Ektachrome 100 is a 100 ISO film available in 35 millimeter, super eight millimeter, and 16 millimeter motion picture film. Now, Ektachrome is a color slide film or reversal film, which means that when you get it processed properly in an E6 chemical process, it will come out as a positive image. Ektachrome was also a really famous, really popular type of film that Kodak made for decades and decades, but they discontinued all of their slide film in 2012, but Kodak reintroduced Ektachrome back in October of 2018 to much anticipation and hype. So because Ektachrome is a color slide film, slide film needs really, really good exposure when you're taking your images. You can't go over or under too far before you start to either blow out highlights or completely crush shadows. So I shot a roll of Ektachrome 35 millimeter at 100 ISO in my Canon here, and let's take a look. So I shot this film at 100 ISO, and I didn't go too far from my Canon camera's light meter reading. Slide film can give you really bright, vivid results, and that's a characteristic that you'll find in almost all professional quality films like these. Now, in my experience, Ektachrome likes to lean a little more towards the cooler side with its colors. You'll see a lot of blues and cyans here in your shots, but it's going to give you the best results with good daylight and a great exposure. So this shot is overexposed by about one stop, and you immediately start to see how these colors shift on slide film. It's really, really blue, and you start to blow out the brighter areas of the shot. Slide film definitely requires you use your best judgment when you're exposing for your shots. So when I underexpose this shot, you can see right away the loss of range in the image. The blacks are crushed and there's just no detail in these regions, so you lose a lot of that. Trying to edit and bring any sort of that up is just gonna result in a lot of grain. High contrast situations also get pretty tricky with these extreme highlights and shadows, and this shot just doesn't have a great well-exposed focus point to it. That's something to keep in mind when I'm exposing the image and try and determine if I want to shoot for the people in the darker areas or the people in the background in the brighter areas. This film, like the majority of films out there, is white balanced to daylight. Shooting ectochrome inside under light bulbs will result in different color shifts because it's designed for sunlight. This is also a lower light situation, but a decent enough exposure can be had with the ambient light that is here. So when we look at skin tones, ectochrome does a pretty good job in certain situations. There are times though, especially when the daylight is fading or just based on the light, when things do become a little bit cooler than in reality. So that characteristic of the film is definitely something to be aware of. In good light though, you can get some pretty accurate looking results, especially for Caucasian skin tones on your subjects and have some really good looking results for people. So Ektachrome does give you these vivid, bright, saturated results. But Ektachrome also does have really solid contrast and a little bit cooler results when you're taking your pictures that you should be aware of when you're shooting ectochrome specifically. If you're looking to get slide film processed properly and have it come out as a positive image, then you need to find a lab that is doing the E6 chemical process. You can send this film through a normal color negative chemical process that is more widely done by labs out there, but it will come out as a negative and it will give you wild color shifts and crazy contrast and really unexpected results. So be aware of that if you're having your slide film cross processed. So I always really like to take the time to actually look at my slides as I get them back. The images on the film is exactly what was captured in your camera, and that's the way that it's supposed to look. And if it's at all possible, you can have your slides mounted and then you can project them as well. And if you wanna see all the different shots on this roll of Ektachrome as more samples and reference to kind of understand what you're getting into if you're shooting this film, then all those samples along with all the samples from all the roll review videos can be seen over on the Analog Resurgence Patreon on, you can head over there. There's a link in the description to check that out. And if you want to pick up some Ektachrome for yourself, there's also some links in the description as to where to find some of this stuff. Kodak has also announced that they are planning to release Ektachrome in 4x5 large format film and 120 medium format film as well in the future. So hopefully that means that we have a lot more of this stuff to look forward to in the future. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have any sort of special
specific films that you want me to shoot and showcase on the channel for you guys and focus on in these role review videos, then just comment down below on these videos and let me know about what you guys want to see in the future. And I will add all those suggestions to my growing list of all the stuff that I want to be able to shoot and show off to you guys. And if there's other topics or stuff that you want to see me talk about or tackle or learn about on the channel, then you can let me know about that stuff as well. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Hey, this is a special thank you to all the amazing people who helped to support Analog Resurgence over on the Patreon during the month of July. So a special thank you to Colin Jackson, David Pirinelli, Benjamin MacArthur, Nakia Jones, Abby Henderson, Audrius Radzaveticus, Fichigu, Carson Fuller, Ramblings from Canada, Bearded Julia, Andrew Snyder, Cha Zaling, and Keyendor. And an extra special thank you to three of the patrons who just went above and beyond in terms of supporting the channel during that month. So thank you to David Pirinelli, Carson Fuller and Andrew Snyder.